Okay, guys. Um, I just wanted to add uh, wanted to add a video that dealt with just a couple other issues that I didn't include in the previous. One is um, how to use a clipping plane, um, and the other is just how to um, export an image um, a part of the model to scale. The the version I showed before was really um, not to scale because there were perspectives, but if you wanted to do some orthographic work and use this uh, model as a basis for that, then you could um, export to a particular scale. Um, okay, so the first thing is the clipping plane. So say I wanted to create a section through here, maybe right about there. Um, of course, I can get into my different view here, be more specific with that. So perhaps I wanted the section cut right through here or maybe just right before I don't know. I'm going to select right through here so we can see the space that's created back there so I'm going to create what's called a clipping plane for that I'm just going to go ahead and create a new layer for clipping planes uh, clipping planes um, okay and I can move that up Uh, just so I know where that is. So now I'll include a clipping plane. So I wanted to, let's just say I'm going to cut it right through here. So I'm going to get into my left view, that was the front. Um, and I want to make sure that the clipping plane is in the right um, orientation. Um, so there's a few ways to um, create a clipping plane. Um, let's see, well, I guess one, just ways to access the tool, let's say. Um, under visibility, you can see here there's a, this little cylinder that looks like it kind of has a plane on it. That is the clipping plane tool. But of course, if I just wanted to start typing that in, clipping plane, and I didn't want to hunt that, that uh, icon down, I can do that. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a rectangle. You can do others um, in different techniques, but I'm just going to draw a right, use the uh, two point rectangle. So I'll draw one point, click one point, and then click the other point. Okay, so um, right away we see that it started to, to do something here, although it's clipping the other end that I actually want. So if I go to this other view, we can also well, see that it's not positioned correctly. So I can move that. Maybe I'll just go to um, this view so we can see what's happening. And I'm just going to move it over here we can see in the lower left hand how that's changing right you can move that clipping plane up and around and so maybe I want to be I don't know right there I could you know include um, where this sort of touches down and then clip there but um, perhaps I'm trying to get back here just to understand the space that's created there and the structure okay um, so perhaps then this is the view that I want, or let me go back here for a second. Um, we can see that it's only uh, affecting the view in which I created it, right? And so if I have it selected, and just like any object, it has properties. So I go into properties, there's object properties, there's material properties, and because it's a clipping plane, there's clipping plane properties. I could flip the direction. So here I can say I want it to keep the other side. Um, I can also toggle which views that it will affect and so we can see how that changes accordingly so that starts to be handy um, when you are let me get back to the left view depending on how you want to situate this and different views that you might want to create so if you wanted to create kind of like a section perspective or something funky like that um, create one of those views which could be interesting. And again, this is really just to get the um, basic uh, uh, line work for the section. There would probably be more development that would have to be uh, implemented here. Um, this has a decent amount of detail, not a whole lot, but you'd want to add more around the cut and so forth. Um, I'm going to go into the left view. This is maybe the main one um, that I'll be concerned with. And then I should be able to go into artistic. Now we have an artistic view, so it's kind of cleaned up. I don't necessarily have all the spaces kind of beyond um, there, but I can go into display and 
include hidden lines or toggle um, some of these other options on or off in order to get um, a general feeling for how that section works. So, you know, if that w view isn't working for you, this may be something you use just for the image of it. Um, see how these different views behave. Again, I typically use the ghosted so we can kind of see uh, what's happening uh, within that space. Um, you know, if I go, I just delete, there was a mass in here, so that was kind of clouding everything up. Um, I'm going to go back to artistic, then I get more of the sections and everything kind of cascading back. Um, so you would be able to do the same thing. Um, again, let me click this. I'll go back to properties, the clipping plane properties. You know, I just want that in the left. I can free up these others. And then maybe I wanted a kind of a plan view. This is going to be kind of uneventful of a plan. Maybe I'll cut it kind of high just because there's not much that it's going to be cutting through, right? Because um, there's just not much there looking down below. But I'll just show you the steps involved in creating it. But it's basically the same way. So clipping plane. I'm going to draw a rectangle again. Now that I would assume is um, on the construction plane. So we're just seeing the base of what's happening here. So I would have to go into a different view in order to raise that up. So now I can move it just like any other object. So you can see what I mean by we're not seeing a whole lot there. Um, but in this case, you know, I might combine a few of the drawings. I might include this um, artistic view. I get rid of these lines. These are just other lines I use to create the base, but um, so you can clean that up. But um, let me just try to turn this layer off. Oh, that's better. Um, so we get an idea how the columns work here. We get an idea how the, the base works. These are just kind of benches and then part of the pavilion um, that's there. Um, so then if I wanted to export one of these, and I believe if I turn the layer off, now the clipping plane still shows up. Is this... Um, on the right layer. Oh, it's not expanded, no, it's on the wrong layer. Right there. And then this one, I wanted to make sure I just wasn't on the correct layer. I also want that to be on clipping plane. Uh, object. There we go. So then it won't show up as I export this. Um, now I can use the same step that I showed previously. You can go into print um, and whether you want to print this out um, to a printer or as a PDF file or as an image it's up to you the size is 11 by 17 in this case um, but then I can manipulate the output and the scale so it's the viewport right now um, scales this percentage but I can because it's just scaled to fit however it's working from the viewport but I can change that to a specific scale so if I wanted eighth inch um, in this case, it's a smaller piece, so uh, probably a quarter, quarter inch, even half inch, probably be better. Whoops. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. So it'd be a half inch um, drawing. This isn't very tall. Then I would just go ahead and print it. And, whoops. I could select the type here, PNG, and then I would, of course, navigate to the appropriate um, folder to, to do that. Um, let's see. I believe that is it. So you have a general idea. Again, some of the modeling of this, I would just probably either in Photoshop or something, just kind of delete some of this, but you have an idea of right where the section cut line is it gives us that information and then we see everything that's beyond and it's this as well it's a bit more of a challenging geometry so you'd be able to use this as the base for 
another drawing, even if it was just the simple geometries and didn't have all these section cuts in it, it would um, be helpful for that. And I would say the same is true for, for this, right? So again, same steps, print, it's already at a half inch scale. And if this wasn't quite right, I can change um, the view in the um, viewport and adjust it a little bit so I get more or less of this area or just move it over a little bit, but you get the general um, overall idea on how that works, hopefully. Um, I'm going to cancel that. And oh, the only, only other thing I wanted to add, I'm going to, let's see, clipping planes, turn this layer back on. And again, if I wanted just to make sure that these aren't active, I can go to properties, clipping planes, um, because I have two selected, it's not enjoying that. That's all off, and that is all off. So these are off. I'll turn the layer off. I talked before about the um, views. Another thing that's helpful as you're kind of setting up views is to know where the horizon line is. And you might just have a quick other um, render or an output here that um, ghosted. Um, identifies that that line and I've done this in a few different ways but one way um, I'm just going to take a rectangle and draw this I'm not really should be relative to a layer on again I've been on the wrong layer here so um, you want to make sure you have a layer that's appropriate for this I'm not paying attention to that now because this is just a demonstration okay so I'm just going to draw a big rectangle um, then I'm going to move that rectangle up. Ghosted. I'm going to move it up. Oh, let's see. 70 inches. 70. Click. There it is. So now if I go to my perspective view and go back to one of my saved views, it says it's going to have them all. I forget which one. There it is. I can basically tell this line, it's, it should be about eye height if that's synced up with um, the view height. So again, if I go into um, properties with nothing selected, here it's at 67. I could adjust that a little bit so they line up, but basically um, that's pretty close. That's going to be the horizon line. So whether there's a person or entourage that's closer to you or farther away, their heads are going to line up on that horizon line if you're assuming that they are the same height. Um, so that's kind of handy. Um, just get that view back. So, um, yeah, you can see it's pretty straight there. Um, but it's handy, especially when you're going around here. That's a line that you could easily erase. Um, in Photoshop or just might want another sort of um, uh, image layer in Photoshop where you have this and you know where to line up the heads and just turn it off when you're going to finally um, output. Um, but it's just nice to have that reference there so you know that that's the horizon, you know where the, you know, how, what the scale is for the overall piece and you don't have to guess as much. So it's handy um, to have it um, set up that way. Um, okay, I think that'll do it for this one. Um, thanks, guys.